All right. Legacy in the morning. Do we have big brain plays to make work this early? Well, we're just playing a Chalice of the Void deck. So, like, you know, this is like... the Chalice of the Void decks, for people that aren't, aren't aware or haven't played a lot of Legacy, these are like the the ham-fisted, just smack the smart brainstorm players around decks. You, uh... You just go ahead and you... Lock them out of casting their spells, and then... It doesn't really matter what you win with after that, because they can't play most of their magic cards. Then, this deck also plays Leyline of the Void in the sideboard, which is great. I actually like this build a good bit. Got Plathalia's, got a Green Sun Zenith package with Sir Teaglesworth, the Scavenging Ooze, Dryad Arbor. So I'm kind of... a lot of good stuff going on. Do you have any mild takes on the new mulligan system? Yeah, every time they've changed the mulligan system in the past, it's been for the better. And this also looks like it will likely be for the better. <clears throat> this hand is not particularly fast, but it's got two Punishing Fires and a Dark Confidant, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Also, like, worth noting here, too, actually, the real reason this hand is keepable is because on top of having two Punishing Fires and a Bob and, like, some lands to cast most of these things. Like, we're just a land away from casting God Teague, so, like, P-Fire's pretty good against fair decks, and, like, um, God Teague is pretty good against unfair decks. All right, step one, didn't get Wastelanded. Good work, team. Good, solid, solid work, team. Let's cycle this. That being said, next turn's probably going to be... Yeah, we're probably dead at this point. And this is just, like, how... How Legacy kind of works. Um, there, it looks like they're playing Maverick, and this Knight of the Reliquary is going to get to Wasteland us every turn for the rest of the game. Or they're just going to make a 20-20 and we're dead. You know? No big, no big, no big deal. Just gonna make 2020 and we're dead. Well, come to Legacy. Do 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 do. So for those not familiar, Dark Depths combined with Thespian Stage makes a 2020 flying black indestructible creature. Um, Knight of the Reliquary. Uh, they'll float mana. They'll search about Thespian Stage. Thespian Stage will copy this. They'll make a 2020 and we'll die. Yay, magic! Alright, so this is a Tabernacle matchup, I think. This is a Swords to Plowshares matchup. This is a Liliana the Last Hope matchup. Pretty sure this isn't a Chalice of the Void matchup. Not only are we bringing in Plows, but like they don't have that many things that we care about Chalicing. Uh, this could be a Kaya matchup. This could be a Kaya matchup. Trim Teague. Yeah, Teague. Teague doesn't accomplish much. I don't think this is a Golgari Char matchup. I think the Mulligan system might change optimal land distribution a little bit. I don't think so. Just because, like, you need to draw lands in your... Maybe maybe it lets aggro decks cheat on lands a little bit, but anything mid-range or control still needs to, like, make land drops as it moves into the mid to late game. Uh, I think this is a keep. Old, old Tranquil Thicket go. Probably on charm as a way to clean out mom. I could see that. I could see that being reasonable. I'm just gonna Liliana edict them here. Mox Diamond, Ditch Ghost Quarter, Liliana Downtick. I'd probably be like. Liliana down, Liliana up, Liliana down, second Liliana down. Yeah, 
Yeah, charm. Charm to clear out mom makes sense. I wonder what else we cut. We need two more cuts to fit in charm. I had someone donate to bump four color loam up over Belcher. I also didn't find a Belcher list, so I should I need to do that at some point. But I didn't find a Belcher list because someone bumped this up over it, so you know. Uh, um. A digital wasteland for now. Play the night out. Well, Wasteland, Wasteland can't kill basics. I could bin the Punishing Fire, but like I don't have a Grove. I don't have a way to get to a Grove. Scrib Ranger is incredibly annoying. It's gonna poke our Liliana. We'd really like to draw a Life from Alone here. So we can like plus our Liliana and not feel bad about it. I rate third of a year thanks for the support and thanks for the tier three welcome back yeah, yeah we're gonna have legacy legacy of modern stuff mixed in for the foreseeable future for sure yep yeah we're gonna do do mantel draws use the modern deck this morning i might do i might fit a third league in i'll see i'll see where we're at time wise the the tough thing about magic online content is i just have no idea how long we'll be playing for Because the leagues take variable amounts of time. It's not like Arena where I can just say, hey, we're going to play for an hour and a half or whatever. So I used to, forever ago, this is the, the second deck I played in Legacy, and I top aided a couple of opens with this archetype. But when that when that was a thing, and I was top aiding those events, this was more of a loam deck and less of a less of a mid-range chalice deck. Eh, it was still a chalice deck, but it, like you played like three loams and you played Burning Wish to get a fourth loam out of your sideboard. Those were the good old days, chat. All right, so we'd really like to draw a land here, so that way we can play a land, play a land on a plus. Get the last card out of their hand. So now I have a Liliana and a Wasteland and a Cabal Pit versus their nothing, which is great. I guess the Wind Swept Teeth probably fetches them a Dryad Arbor at some point, but I have Wasteland to check that. Bobby, that's a good draw. Nantuko, Nantuko Monastery. I wonder how many kids in chat know know the oracle text on Nantuko Monastery offhand. Yeah, poor Bob. One good, one good draw step deserves another, right? <clears throat> the fun part here is this windswept teeth is my clock. We're gonna go ahead and uh, fetch up dry at our birth or instep. No idea what that card says, yep. It eats it eats batter skulls. So, sometimes the real the real good games were when it uh when it got to eat Tarmogoyf. And they had the wee little baby goyfs. Was uh when we played that card Teamer Teamer Delver was everywhere. And that card that card ate up uh, Nimble Mongoose too. I think I just hold on to these swords. Yay, Bobby. <clears throat> There's some optimal land to spell ratio you want. In your specific specific deck, the distribution ratio in your opening hand is symmetric, but we can say that Flood has a higher cost than Screw. 
So to minimize, you actually... I actually think that's not true for a lot of things, Adam. <laughs> I, think, I think your premise there is bad. I think many decks, I think lots of decks lose way more games to screwing than they would than they do to flooding. So I would I would disagree with your your posset there. I uh, just bought it in Legacy today, yep. The, uh, the Mythic Championship is going on in Cleveland this weekend, and that starts today. So, we'll be doing Standard on that later today. I'm going to take half their lands away. Make them choose between white and black mana. <clears throat> it is it is spreadsheet day. It's Friday. Got to buckle down and get all the actual work done before the weekend. What's going on, Sirius? Thanks for the four months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Ad nauseum. Checking in for the 13th month in a row. Thanks for that. That opponent played an exceedingly large amount of garbage time. On to on to the next one. Yeah, I think I think the people that said I want someone said I want this to kill Mother of Ruins. I think that's probably correct. What do I want to trim here though? Is the question. I wonder if I cut a land in this matchup. Ghost Quarter is not particularly good. I boarded I boarded in Tabernacle, which is like a pseudo land. Will I recast the PT? I'm not planning to recast the PT with commentary, but I do plan to host the channel for people that want to talk about it here. Yeah, yeah, today's all, all non-rotatoes. How long is the pink going to last? I'm told it, it usually stays in for like four to six weeks. We're in 61. I could just submit 61. You're not wrong. I do kind of like all the cards that we have at the moment. Right, we'll submit 61 like the good old days. My favorite thing was I used to I top aided a couple of events with this with 61 61 cards in it, and they would often uh only type 60 cards into the deck list. They just assumed they'd just count to 60 and assume that anyone would play 60. Kai is great, she makes them discard cards and she draws cards. Um, huh. Let's draw, let's draw a land on one. Hey, thanks, Dev. I appreciate that. I think I want to just make a land drop for the turn and hold the Mox Diamond for now. Because by, by holding the Mox Diamond, it's a little bit worse against Athalia, but I'm probably just going to, like, Golgari Charm Athalia. But, um, the holding the Diamond for later means that if I, if I like, draw a Loam, I can, like, get ahead on mana in a turn, which is nice. Perfect. Just, just like we drew it up. So, do I play Maze of Ith for the turn? I think I want to play Maze of Ith for the turn. Playing Maze of Ith for the turn gets dicey if I, if they like have a wasteland though. I think, I think I'm gonna hang tight and just pass back. I could, I could play Diamond. There's an off chance they have like Maelstrom Pulse in their deck though, and they didn't play Thalia last turn, so I think I just hold on to the Diamond for now. Also, also good in case they bog me.
You don't think Pulse is a legacy card? Yeah, but like, like by waiting, we get to play around Bog, which I didn't even think of. By waiting, we play around Maelstrom Pulse, which is a possibility. Just like, you're right that like, it's not super likely, but like, there's no reason to play into something that could be there if there's no real upside. Like, the only real upside is, like, if they Thalia me, and they didn't Thalia me the previous turn, so they're probably, probably not going to Thalia me. Hey, a friendly tryhard. Thanks for the nine months. Foxicon with the entire year. Welcome back. You did sneak that sword in a little bit early, it looks like. And Slayer, thank you for the Prime. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around, folks. Wind Spinks, thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Yeah, Green Sun, Green Sun for Death Rite Shaman, right? That was a, that was a thing we did in this deck for a little while. Play, play the old the old Miser Death Rite. If they have Plows or Abrupt Decays, I would continue attacking my mana. Wow, just, just past there is real good for me. I think I... Do I just get Knight going here? I kind of want to just get Liliana down and get her tick in. This, uh, because I have Dryad Arbor in play, the Golgari Charm has some pretty diminishing returns. So I'm just going to go ahead and play her and plus this. If they, like, fetch a Dryad Arbor, I can plow it. Legacy is really not that hard. People people overstate the complexity of Legacy to make themselves feel smart. It's like every format in Magic, right? Like, my my deck's hard to play, your deck's easy to play, etc., etc. My, my format's hard, your format's easy. Yeah, like, Legacy's sweet, don't get me wrong, but, like... The idea that it's just, like, this super high IQ format that, like, is way different than every other format. It's just like, well, if, like, if Legacy was, like, really that much more skill intensive, like, you'd see players have way higher win percentages compared to other formats of Magic. And that just doesn't, it just doesn't translate that way. Yeah, yeah, big, a big part of the complexity in Legacy is, like, knowing, know, being familiar with the deeper card pool. I definitely agree with that. TMT, thanks for the tip, I appreciate it. I'll get that added after I'm done today. Ramanap Excavator. Yikes. Glad, glad we've been holding those swords to plowshares, so... They're going to wasteland me a bunch here. And by a bunch, I mean only once more because I have a swords. Is the actual played card pool greater than modern? No, not really. There's probably more playable cards in modern than legacy. There's only, and there's only two loams in this deck and they bogged one. So I only have one more loam. So Wasteland's, like, actually pretty scary at this point. Although, if they don't have another Swords to Plowshares themselves, they're just going to, like, get beat down by my Knight and my Dryad Arbor pretty quickly here. Yeah, playable, playable is subjective. And, like, the problem is, like, just, like, like, in the pro and the problem is, like, the same as everyone else, right? It just, like, comes down to this pissing contest just because there's no, there's no objective magic data. So, like, I tell you... I tell you that like a lot of things aren't playable, but people show up with them anyways, or other people argue, well, they are playable, and it's just like, well, I say this, you say that, and at the end of the day, like nobody's going anywhere because like there isn't any objective data to like coincide with. I guess they can They can just like sit here and fog me with Scrib Ranger plus Dryad Arbor, right? Which is kind of annoying. And the other thing is like like if I look, if I look at, if I look at this deck right now, this knight doesn't actually have anything useful to do, right? Like my maze of ith is gone. It's in my bin. I'm uh, getting cycle lands doesn't accomplish anything. Wait, extra wastelands don't really do anything. So I'm just like attacking with this beater.
Really? That's, that's aggressive. Hey, Hurt, good morning. Thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. What matchup is Tabernacle? I actually boarded in Tabernacle here. Tabernacle, tab Tabernacle is for the creature decks, like elves, goblins, things like this, where they tend to have a lot of creatures. Oh, they discarded their Dryad Arbor, did they? No, I think I think maybe you're thinking of last game. Right, they have they have three cards to my to my none. And their knight is bigger than my knight. Do 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 Oh yeah, they do have they do have a dry arbor in their bin. I missed it. Good call. If you add your points to Summoner's Egg, will I play it today? Uh, depending on the timing, yeah, that would make it the next deck. And yeah. All right, all in. Go. Your move, your move, Yugi boy. This is all I got. Just me, me and Miguel. Oh no! Oh no! That's actually a really good draw because it means that uh, if I draw any green or black source, I get to Golgari Charm and kill this mother of ruins. So. We got that going for us. So green, green and black sources are lethal. Green or black source. God, what a just. <laughs> oh, magic. So it's always funny that like the 26 land decks never have lands. You know, and I know I wastelanded myself there, but like if we'd have if we'd have hit if we'd have hit the green source this turn or the black source, we'd have Golgari charmed, killed Mum. Well, I guess they would have given this protection, right? So we're probably dead regardless. Yeah, we'll probably end up dead regardless there. Eh. Yeah, the waste the wasteland mirrors and legacy are not not super enjoyable. Finally bought Crucial Brain after you played it. I only have to wait seven more months to play it at FM. Why do you have to wait seven months, Slayer? Hey Cuthbert, thank you for the two month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh the Mythic Championship is draft and standard. They'll do standard this afternoon. They do like a draft, three rounds of draft, and a lunch break, though, usually. So it's going to be a hot second before they get to standard. So, you might not have been watching the first game, but the first game, they had Thespian Sage combo on their deck. I guess I had a Wasteland. Did I have, did I have Green Sun Zenith in my hand at that point? Yeah, I didn't think about using my Knight as a, as a ramp spell. That's probably better. I'm gonna lead on Wasteland here, because I don't want them to lead on Wasteland and like Wasteland my Bayou and then not have colored mana. Yay. Yay, Wasteland. Yay, Legacy. Correct. You can you could we could have we could in fact have Green Sun for a night. Uh, 
I, I agree with your assessment. Then I have Wasteland to deal with whatever their knight does. Yeah, it's probably better. I get magic online. Just mono. Mono lag. Great. It's great for it's great for people. It's just good for magic, Gabriel Paints. It's just it's just gonna be good for magic, is what it's gonna be. Like like most other changes, it's just gonna be good for magic. Now I think I think every deck gets better with card selection. Every every deck gets better when it gets to play more magic. I don't know, and it's the awkward part, like do I do I even dredge loam here? Or do I do I dredge loam or am I supposed to take draws? I think I'm just supposed to dredge the loam. Like the upside to dredging loam is eventually I hit a cycle land and then I get to like dredge the loam and do other stuff. I think I'm going to play a backup Chalice of the Void for one here. Because they're probably... They're probably a Council's Judgment deck. So, like, they're going to, like, Council's Judgment this other one at some point. Makes it easier to cheat. Yeah. Yeah. All, all competitive magic should eventually just be digital. Just like get rid of the whole cheating angle. It's like it's like I knew. It's like I knew I could see into the future. Yeah, it was just an issue with OBS Python. I literally just restarted OBS and it worked fine. Step step one was restart OBS and then it worked, so Yeah, not not having to exert mental energy like shuffling and physically moving cards and watching for people cheating is just such such an A plus experience. I'm done. I'm just not doing anything. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to concede to that card. I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any answers to that. Uh, choke, Kaya. Dali is probably okay. Ghost Quarter is not very good here. Maze isn't very good here. I think I keep some Punishing Fires in just because Punishing Fire to tick down Jace is pretty valuable. Why on God's green earth would Ghost Quarter be better than Wasteland? Because you want you want to Ghost Quarter them off of all their basics. That doesn't sound very reasonable. I don't I don't believe that that that, that is reasonable.
Yeah, they both they both kind of suck, but some the reason why Wasteland's an obnoxious card is because sometimes you just draw your Tundras. Hey, Demir Spy. So how do you feel about Esper Control Splash Crisis to kill people? Fantastic. Submit it through the forum. I mean, like, to be fair, like, the viewer count on coverage right now is extra low because they're just starting for the day. All right, we're down to 24 lands. Call it a day. 24 lands might be a touch low. And for the for the record, I think both Ghost Quarter and Wasteland are bad in this matchup, but I think Wasteland's marginally less bad. Hey, Ven Faith, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a good one wherever you're at. Leading on Grove of the Burn Willows here, as opposed to uh, Verdant Catacombs, because Verdant Catacombs needs to fetch Scrubland so I can play. All of the spells in my hand. Angel Puff, thanks for the six months. I appreciate the half a year. Welcome back. All right, so I think I just get Bob Fadon into play here. You know what they say about Scrublands chat? It's the same thing they say about people who play Badlands. They're really plateauing their legacy career. Bobby! Target, opponent, discard, swords to plowshares. Yep. Yep. And then I cast this knight, and they untap and cast Terminus, and we concede. Gorbatron. What's up with the hair? Thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. We had a we had a sub goal to dye the hair. The internet, the internet likes a challenge. Yeah, that pun could only get better if I could work Savannah in there somehow. Also conceding to Back to Basics. Yeah, I might do a third deck depending on how long these take, but... I don't like to make promises that I that I can't keep, so I only put two in the title. It's just impossible to know how long. Yay, legacy! Yay! But Jeff, you drew Assassin's Trophy. You could kill the back to basics, Jeff, after you knight for some land. Well, you see, player, they have cards like Counterspell and Force of Will. So I'm going to take two more miserable turns and then eventually get Counterspelled off my play. Z, thanks for the 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. It's not only it's not only expensive, but like the play patterns in Legacy are pretty specific. So like if you don't enjoy the play patterns of like two or three of the better decks in the format, all the other decks are pretty similar to them. At least the good decks, anyways. The good the good decks tend to have similar play patterns to other decks in the format. And with just one more loss, we will have successfully taken $12 and flushed it down the toilet in 35 minutes. You know, it's funny. I think I think well, that's one of the bigger things that I dislike about Magic Online versus Arena is just like the the not having to be, it, not having to partake in online gambling to play is just like so much better. Arena, arena is good, good stuff.
Like, the Legacy ban list has some cards on it that are very silly, just like the Modern ban list. Like, why, why on God's green earth is Earthcraft still banned? Why is, why is Mind Twist not legal? I don't play in the rooms where the queues chalky because they don't make for good content. Because there's no MMR and a majority of the people playing in the rooms on Magic Online for free are people who don't have cards. I'm not saying that's all of them. I'm saying a majority of them in my experience. My, my anecdotal evidence indicates that the quality of gameplay is different in those rooms. I mean, that's not that's not strictly true, Makeshift Reaper. There are a lot of people who all they did was like, especially people who live in countries where the cost of living is lower, that they just like grind two or three hundred dollars a month out of Magic Online. Because they hate squirrels. Dryad Arbor, Bloodstained Mire. Are we playing a mirror? We might be playing a mirror. This night is my night. Do, 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 You know, I maybe when they attacked that Dryad Arbor, it's possible I should have like fetched my own Dryad Arbor and blocked since I had so many lands. Yeah, they wouldn't uh they wouldn't have been able to do this if I'd have uh if I'd have traded their Dryad Arbor last turn. Well, I guess maybe they, they could have had another land in their hand, right? Instead of Wasteland. Sure. You got, you got me. There's a bunch of good standard stuff up on the YouTube channel. I will not be will not be doing any standard today. I'm, I'm just gonna play another match. I, re I really just don't want to play a mirror. I really really just don't want to sit here and wasteland each other. It's kind of miserable. Bigs wine. Thanks for the prime. Yeah, no, no standard today. The uh, the Mythic Championship's going on. So, I'm going to watch that later today. No, no standard is the viewer count's going to be low because of the Mythic Championship regardless. And um, I'd rather queue out the backlog of some of these Legacy and Modern decks in the queue so that way we can just get through them. Having... Having a day where I go through two, three, four of them is good. Cause we're not we're not adding that many anymore. I'm rejecting rejecting all the bad bad decks like this now. I just don't want to play them. Legacy Legacy and Modern is gonna be just like sticking to the sweet sweet linear degenerate decks moving forward for the most part, or like fair decks that I really like, like uh, say Black Green Rock or Blue Black Fairies. The Mythic Championship is split format. It's draft and standard, so. Four color loam seems pretty well positioned right now. Ah, uh, my favorite thing is timing out people who talk about positioning in these formats. Yeah, exactly. If I wanna like grind out and play fair magic with lots of lots of decisions over a long game, like I'll play Soul Time Mirrors in standard. Positioning is this auto chess? Yeah. People people like to talk about metagames because it makes them feel smart to metagame and I'm like the the metagames the likes we don't have we don't have we don't have data. You don't know what a metagame is. Every deck gets better with the new mulligan rule. Actually, actually all of them. They all get better. 
The combo decks get better because they're going to find their combo pieces more consistently, and the decks against the combo decks are going to find their hate cards more consistently. You're going to lead to lead to just more interactive games of Magic. Yeah, I plan to I plan to host the main the main Magic channel. All right, I'm done waiting in this queue. I'm just gonna be done for the day. Um, uh, if you're gonna play Legacy, I'd recommend registering Brainstorm. That's my that's my wrap up. That's my wrap up for this.